Jeffrey and William J. Barber. Last week, folks, he was announced as one of the win winners of the MacArthur Genius Grant. Uh, it is an award which comes with $625,000 over the next five years. He, of course, longtime state chair, uh, leader of the NAACP, still a member of the National Board of the NAACP, uh, also one of the conveners with repairs of the breach. They have been very much involved uh, in the Poor People's Campaign, picking up where Dr. King left off in, in the SCLC in 1968. He joins us via phone from Kansas. First off, Doc, congratulations. Thank you, Roland. Thank you. You know, that was a shock, man. When they first called me, I thought it was a prank joke. And uh, <laughs> I said, what in the world? Then I, they told me it was for real. They've been watching me for a while. It was anonymous. They couldn't say who nominated whoever. I started just crying, man, like a little baby, thinking about all the years of work. But um, I'm humbled, man, and thankful. Uh, and, of course, uh, you are out there doing the work uh, in terms of the Poor People's Campaign. Uh, and so uh, got to ask, look, it, look, it, it takes money and dollars to do uh, these things. Are you also pa pa still pastoring uh, your church there in North Carolina? Simple question. What you going to do with the money? Well, you know what I'm going to do with it is keep doing this work. It's funny about this grant. This grant says they give the money to you not for what you've done in the past, but what they expect you to do in the future. They expect you to continue to work. You know, working in poor communities and what we're doing, a lot of times we have to go where people cannot even afford us to come. So our plans are to take a look at how do we use it um, once things start happening in January to further this work. You know, I was in, I was in police custody when they announced it uh, in Chicago, standing with low-wage workers and janitors and McDonald workers. I'm here today in Kansas the day after Trump left. We're having thousands of people out tonight for Poor People's Campaign National Call for Moral Revival hearing where poor and impacted people, people impacted by uh, systemic racism, poverty, ecological devastation, the war economy, are testifying. And, it, and, and the reason they're doing it is the politicians can't talk tonight. They've been invited to come listen. And we're registering people for the movement who vote. Because I think one of the things, Roland, that you not only need a villain to vote, you need a vision to vote. And I'm saying to Democrats, we should just tell folks, you know, be against Trump. Be against Trump because you are for and if you take out you know, your anger on Trump on these state legislators and these Congress people because you are for, because you can bet to a bottom dollar, extremists have an agenda. When they run, they know exactly what they want and what they what they intend to do. And we've got to take them on, you know, on that terms. So and that's what we're doing here tonight. Kansas and we'll be in Missouri to, uh, the day after and we just continue to move across the country. Uh, Reverend, I got to ask you a little bit earlier, we were talking about uh, what Republicans are doing across this country with voter suppression. Yeah. We're seeing uh, yeah. Greg Palace in his investigation discovered 591,000 people, things purged from the voting rolls there. Texas drama there as well. Of course, you have seen this thing up close and personal uh, with some of the most evil people in the country. That is the North Carolina Republican Party. Yeah. Uh, and I keep saying that this is flat out, I don't care what anybody says, this is affirmed policy of the Republican National Committee. It is. I mean, and clearly, and it started in 2010, which also coincided with the time that the Chamber of Commerce decided that they wanted to take a look at how they could take over the Supreme Court. And they knew that in order to get that, they had to suppress the vote so that they could get control of the state capitals, so the state capitals could gerrymander the districts where people are in Congress. And therefore, they could, you know, they control the Congress. Um, and, and also by suppressing the vote in these bad cities, they could, they could work to control the Senate, particularly in the South. And as you know, Trump lost by three million popular votes. He won by 80,000 votes in three states. One of those states was Wisconsin. He won by 30,000 or so votes. 250,000 black votes were suppressed. Um, we had 698 fewer voting sites in black and brown communities in the 2016 election. So we have to have a massive turnout, and we have to have a massive uh, a massive turnout and a focus on this voter suppression and break the back of it. One of the things people miss, when we, Lindsey Graham went off, you know, how his support for Kavanaugh, it did not come out, uh, uh, Roland, that Kavanaugh uh, voted to uphold the photo, racist photo ID in South Carolina that Lindsey Graham supported. That never came out. And so, you know, when he was going off, he, that's he was going off saying he was for Kavanaugh because Kavanaugh did the very thing he wanted done in his state. 
we can overwhelm the system, though. We, we, if we get somebody said 12 or 14 percent higher than the last uh, mid year, we can do this. So everybody, I to guess, they has to turn out and stay there. And not just turn out the people who live, but turn out everybody. I was at a rally last night, Roland, and we were talking about how over 10 million people uh, in North Carolina who were registered to vote last time didn't vote, and a half million of those were African Americans. We cannot afford to do that when you know people are doing everything they can to suppress your vote. One last thing, really. Right now, we hear, um, you heard today, McConnell say mob rule and Lindsey Graham mob rule. Do you know that when the judge overruled uh, George Wallace, when he was blocking the marches from Selma to Mount Dunbar, George Wallace said to that Southern judge, you have now joined in supporting mob rule. Mob rule is a direct quote of racist segregation from the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. And Democrats better call it out and call it what it is. All right, then. Reverend William J. Barber, we certainly appreciate it. Hey, uh, Poor People's Campaign website? Uh, yeah, Poor People's Campaign. If you go to poorpeoplescampaign.org, you can go there or go to uh, www.breachrepairers.org and click on the Poor People's Campaign Right, Reverend Barber, always appreciate you. You've been a supporter of Roland Martin Unfiltered. Uh, thanks for coming on.